live with. We always knew that we were going to get, you know, an area and a place to be. So uh, we were happy with the sort of bespoke thing for people to just get involved and feel, you know, the fact that they were sort of taking some time and listening to the music uh, was the most important thing. I think what a lot of fans wanted to know is, did you guys already know what 13 tracks you wanted to use to start with? I mean, or did that no, change? No, no, sorry, it definitely, it definitely changed. Uh, as we sort of, when the website went live, you can see between what songs and then what the popular ones, which are not the popular ones. And uh, yeah, we had, we had a rough idea, probably uh, 70%, 67% of what's on the record, we, we knew we wanted on there. But I think we did kind of react a little bit to kind of what people were choosing. Yeah, because yeah, okay. I think it's a useful little way to find out that information. When there's five people just playing out songs for the record, obviously they have conflicts of opinion. You know, if you look at the album that I made on the website, then there's probably about five of them that aren't making the CD. You know, obviously that's the story for me, but you're in a band that's uh, it's all about compromise, I suppose. Democracy. Democracy. Yes. So, with the debut album, you had international success, you had three million sales with the debut album, so you'd already made a mark. But when you when the riots happened, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the riots now. I predict the riot came straight back off the charts. Okay? Did, you, did you get to the war? I don't actually know, but it did jump straight I don't understand this, uh, this logic that we see, like, uh, everyone asks us about it, which I understand everyone asks us about, how did you can write the riots, that makes sense. And, uh, but I don't understand the people that sat at home and uh, the riots on the TV and they're like, I know what, let's, <laughs> let's get downloaded and just riot quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 know, I know, I know, I can't say I'm coming. I had a guy tweeting recently saying, uh, can you confirm the rumours that Kylie Chiefs went to two, two million in royalties? We don't get any time the word right, it's usually a newspaper. We don't, we don't get money for that, you know. Yeah, kind of. And you know what, that is far from the truth. I mean, at that time, no, that rumour really came up, but uh, I didn't dispute it. It sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I thought of you when I saw people on so with their, you know, industrial side facts of white rice that they're looting. No, I thought about you guys. Because we look like, 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 like. <laughs> No, but I just, you know, I want to know, along a lot of people, did you sit there and think, touch yourself, I knew this was going to happen? Did no. it even crash your mind? Were you just like, No, because oh, we've got other songs that are more yeah. apt for that. The yeah, Actually, Riots really about the night out in Leeds, whereas uh, Never Miss a Beat is more about the London mm. Riots. Yeah. So, just buy the whole back catalogue, you know, and embrace it, listen to it. We've got the future of the label, which is a word we're fighting now. <laughs> it's actually not on CD. It's highly American, but it's on that. So, um, in terms of where you are right now, you've done, you know, international tours, UK tours, four albums, the, the, the last one, the Bespoke album. Did you ever see yourself being anything else other than in music? You know, were you going to be there? We going to be. Well, yeah, I mean, we all, obviously we had to have other jobs before. We didn't just, you know, we were, didn't put sunglasses on this one when we were dead. <laughs> yeah, I was, a, I was a, a, a teacher, so I was a, a, a landlord. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a, a computer fixing business. Yeah. But it's one of those things where like you never, people ask you, you know, is this what you always want to do? And you can't. So everything else you did, like university and trying to get, get jobs afterwards, it was always, you did it enough that you could make the band rehearsals and the gigs, you know, you made everything else fit around it. And it's only when you kind of get the success that you realise that right. everything else always came sort of second. You know, yeah, you, you yeah. never sort of questioned you know, the band, but it wasn't like you had any tattoos on your arm or anything like that. It was just, it was from an early age, it was always something that we did, you know, like a, a social activity that we did. And then as you get older and older, you, it becomes something that you realise that you want to do. Looking back now, I see, thinking, about what my friends would have been thinking. It's like weird that we always just sort of jobs and stuff were secondary really and being in the band was the first thing. It was only when uh, we had some time off after the third album and just sort of went home and relaxed and sort of absorbed it all. And even after all, all success and all the things I've done, it was only then that I really thought, all oh, right, that's my job, I'm a musician. That's cool, right? And definitely, I thought it was only then it sort of sunk in that like, I don't need to think, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to be a teacher, am I going to do this, I'm going to do that. This is my job. Yeah. So talking about reflecting and moments, I want, to, I want to talk through some moments. I want to talk about what the proudest moment, as band or individuals, whatever the proudest moment for you. So many. I think 
so many of these games it's hard to pick one and then because really that was your moment because it changes when you remember you know certain tours or awards or doing you know sort of doing stuff playing at home you know Ellen Road at home trying football stadium yeah. that's pretty special I think Two people dancing, it was Peter and the poor Adam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 